Hello, motorcycle video fans. Welcome back. I'm Sean Maddich. I'm the video content producer here at Motorcycle.com. Uh, some of you may remember me a while back. We did a review of the Insta360 1X 360 camera. I was quite impressed with it. it specifically, its ability to not miss any of the action around you when you're on a motorcycle. You know, you're out there on a track day or a race with your buddies, and you mount your GoPro pointing at the front of your bike, or let's say the back of the bike, and something happens behind you or to the side, you don't get it on tape, it didn't happen, right? Well, now with the 360 cameras that are available from Insta360, as well as some of the competition like GoPro, uh, you can cover all the action. This is another Insta360 camera. It's called the Go2. This is actually not the camera. This is the case, which is pretty small, right? It also doubles as a uh, start, stop, and mode uh, control for it. The actual camera is right there. That's the size of the camera. I mean, that's some pretty incredible engineering that they can get down. This thing has stabilization, has time lapse, time shift, which is also called hyperlapse, which basically speeds up the video and does some nice, uh, I think they do a little setting of the shutter to get a nice blur and streaking so you get more of a sense of motion on there. That's pretty cool. Uh, it shoots slow motion up to 120 frames per second at HD quality. Uh, this will also shoot 30 or 50 frames at 1440p. So that's about 2.5K, uh, which is going to give you room to crop in if you need to or you want to zoom in on some action, let's say that happened further away, if your video is going to be standard HD output. What I think is maybe most amazing about this is that this, uh, you don't have to worry about keeping the camera level, no matter how you orient it on your bike or your body because um, you know you could mount this thing just about anywhere it actually comes with uh, you get the uh, the camera obviously the case which is also doubles as a charger so the camera will shoot about 30 minutes um, and it takes about 35 minutes to get a full charge uh, and you can charge it two more times in the case itself so why don't we go over uh, all the stuff that this camera does in terms of video uh, you can shoot 120 degree super wide angle also, it has a linear mode, which is 110 degree, which you're going to get a little less of the lens distortion. So depending on, you know, what you're shooting, if you're going to do, like, say, a cockpit point of view, mount this on your chest. Pretty much you can mount this thing just about anywhere. You can mount it up on the brim of a hat if you're not riding a motorcycle. And, you know, your normal GoPro mount, GoPro style mounts or Insta360 action mounts where the other cameras that you'd mount them on your bike. You can, you can mount this as well. We'll get to that shortly. The camera also has a HDR video. So if you're shooting in a high contrast situation, you can switch it over to HDR and get a little bit of a wider dynamic range. Cool feature if you do want to get some scenery, you know, time lapse, some clouds or sunrise over your motocross track or what have you. The stand actually acts as well. There we go. And then you can just adjust your angle with the hinge. They had the the forethought to make the, you know, the hinge holds its whatever position you set it at. So that's great for time lapse or if you just want to shoot yourself doing something. So who's going to want to use this camera? Uh, what does it replace? What doesn't it replace? Pretty much anyone that's going to want to just have something that's really easy to use, really convenient, something you can have on you all the time, not think about it. Um, one of the really cool features of this is that, you know, if your camera's empty, you run out of charge, you just same as your iPods. Throw it in the case, fold it up, put it in your pocket, forget about it. 20 minutes later, you're almost fully charged. Half an hour, 35 minutes later, actually, you're 100% charged on the camera. So you're ready to shoot. Uh, so just the ease of use of this, kind of having it, you go on vacation, you know, you're in Hawaii or something, you want something on the beach, you can go in the water with this, down to 13 feet. You, you want to go out there and shoot you and your buddies on a motocross track, road racing, your adventure bike, whatever. This camera will do it. Um, pretty much all the standard mounts that you would use for any other action camera are going to work with this. What isn't it going to do? Okay, it doesn't completely replace your full action cameras like I was saying earlier. It doesn't shoot up to 4K. Um, it doesn't shoot up to say like, I think, the latest GoPro, I believe, goes up to about 240 frames per second, so you're not going to get that super slow-mo, but 120 frames per second at HD, that's pretty good for and something in this size that's kind of incredible. Uh, you do have to also keep in mind, probably the biggest difference with this, like I was saying, is, well, well two things. One is your storage and your battery. You know, once you run out of storage or 
you run out of charge, your camera's down for a while, uh, either to dump your media or to get a charge up. You can't just swap out the card or swap out the battery. So that's something to think about. That's probably a reason why it's not going to completely replace the other action cameras. Uh, the other thing is you don't have that LCD screen to see what's going on all the time with the camera. Normally you can use a case, and although it's not as uh, information rich as, let's say, using the app or some of the larger action cameras, most of the information you need is here. Uh, if not, you can use your smartphone. So the one time that maybe you might be in a wrong mode or something like that is if you're, you know, especially if you're using sport bikes in high speed, you're not going to want to really mount the case. You're going to want to mount it using this guy on a secure like sticky mount or something like that or a chesty and you may not have, if you're about to go out for a session at your track day or you're doing a road race, you may not have, uh, you know, the case or the app with you. So that's the one time that I think knowing that you're shooting in the mode you want to be and knowing you're rolling might be a little bit harder to ascertain than, than on a standard action camera, but other than that, this, this thing's incredible. Uh, the closest thing I could think as far as competition would be like a GoPro session. And maybe there's some other cameras out there that I'm not aware of. I don't claim to know all the action cameras. Uh, and, but I do know uh, one of the things that makes this one unique is the fact that you don't have to worry about how you orient it. Just get it pointed generally in the right direction. And no matter which way the camera gets twisted, you know, your shot's level and it's smooth because of the internal stabilization. So. I mean, in a short amount of time, action cameras have come really far. I give it a thumbs up. Um, I'll be using it. Uh, this is probably going to be like my backup camera on our shootouts or, or what have you. You know, just keep it there in my pocket. Maybe have the little mount ready to go. And basically, this is all I need. If the bikes are already equipped with some sticky mounts and, you know, your standard GoPro mounts like this, extensions, handlebar mount, you know, we're going to have that stuff around anyway because for our, our standard action cameras. Uh, this can be in your pocket and one of your cameras goes down or you want another angle, just throw this on there. This is also really good for getting those angles that are maybe not a lot of space, like that shot from underneath the subframe. If you want to use it on the end of a pole, you can actually mount the case right in like that. Boom. And now, as a user, if I'm holding this and I'm shooting somebody in front of me, there is a tally light on the back of the case, as well as in the front of the camera. So I want to start recording. It takes a moment for it to start rolling. And uh, you're good to go. Done shooting. Hit your record button. Fold it up. Pretty safe. If you want, take it off of that, stick it in your pocket, you're done. So one of the cool features of the camera is you can just use the Insta360 app. It's the same app you use for all other cameras. And you're just going to want to select the camera icon on the bottom of the screen. It's going to detect what cameras are around and available. It shows the go to. You select it again, it'll have a list, so, you know, if you had more than one camera around, there would be that list there. And boom, the camera should wake up. You see the, the blue tally light on the camera came on. Asks you if he wants to join. And, you know, sometimes with these apps, there's a little bit of a moment while everything's talking to each other, and boom. So now, if we wanted to record, just hit the record button. And you'll notice in the background there, that tally light right below the lens of the camera is flashing. And if I come in here, hit the record button again, stops flashing, easy as that. You got your different video modes here, so pro video mode, standard, HDR for high contrast, time lapse, time shift, and then you can also choose between your color modes, vivid colors, log, that's if, if you want a flat profile to do all your grading and post, it'll give you the most latitude, uh, standard colors, 
So we'll colorize it, but make, make it not quite as poppy. In the top resolution, you can either do standard HD, which is 1080p, or 1440p, which is a quite a bit higher resolution. Uh, if you want to do 9 by 16, you can do that. Vertical for phones, for like Instagram. And your field of view, your wide, your action view, you get less, a little bit less distortion. Linear, even less distortion. And narrow, which I think is digitally cropping, cropping in. You're probably going to lose a little, a little bit of resolution on that. Um, so that's your linear mode. So if you mount this on the front of your bike or on the rear of your bike and a bike's in front or behind you, that's probably the mode I would go with. Uh, if you're going to do shooting back at the rider from like the cockpit or the front of the bike, you might do either action view or if you're doing a chesty and you want everything, perhaps a wide view. And if you want to review your clips, go in your album and it'll have everything that's stored on the camera there. And that, boys and girls, is the Insta360 phone app. As far as importing the footage, um, you can either import it to your phone, even edit on your phone. The camera even can do editing for you once you shoot stuff. They have a feature called Flash Cut 2.0 Auto Edit, and you select a song you like that they provide for you, and it'll just take little snippets of all your clips and even do the cuts to the beat of the music. So, I mean, they're making it so easy to make videos nowadays, and as anyone who's been on the social media sees, it's, it's a popular thing. So I, I think they're gonna sell a lot of these, not just for action sports people, but for vloggers and people that just kinda wanna always have something to capture, you know, what's happening around them on video and get some cool angles and perspectives. And, you know, you can take this thing places you can't even shoot with your phone. Mount it anywhere, you don't have to, it's pretty rugged, you don't have to worry about wrecking your $2,000 phone, you can take it underwater. Pretty cool product. But yeah, the other thing to keep in mind with the camera, um, you do need to go through the Insta360 Studio desktop software uh, before you're going to import it into, let's say, Premiere Pro or Final Cut. Uh, Insta360 does make a plugin that lets you view the software or view the video rather with uh, Final Cut and Premiere Pro. But f at least for my workflow, I found the easiest thing to do was to just run it through the Insta360 desktop software and then export it out and then import it into my editing software. Uh, one extra step, but if, you, if you've used the other cameras, the 360 cameras like the 1R and the 1X1 and 1X2, you're already used to using the Insta360 desktop software. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed my review of the Insta360 Go 2. Um, be sure and come back to Motorcycle.com for obviously all your motorcycle reviews and every now and then for your video reviews for you video moto people out there. Thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. Give us a thumbs up if you like. If you don't, hey, we'll try harder next time. Bye-bye. Power.